Welcome to Suburban Academy, and today we are going to review PFAS monitoring requirements for water suppliers in Pennsylvania in under five minutes. So let's get started. Emerging PFAS regulations at the state and federal level have left a lot of public water suppliers with questions. Including, what compounds do you need to test for? And when do you collect your samples? Suburban Testing Labs is here to help you stay informed and understand your available testing options. The new PFAS MCL initial monitoring starts as soon as January 2024 for two compounds. While the proposed US EPA MCL for six compounds has not yet been promulgated, it is expected in the near future. Okay, so first, let's start with PA's upcoming rule. PA DEP is regulating two PFAS compounds in drinking water, PFOA with a maximum contaminant level of 14 parts per trillion, and PFOS with an MCL of 18. We recommend analyzing for these two compounds using method EPA 537.1. Community systems and non-transient non-community systems serving greater than 350 will begin quarterly monitoring in January 2024, and those serving 350 or less start in January of 2025. If your results are below the MRL of 5 parts per trillion for both compounds, you may be eligible for reduced monitoring. This is similar to how monitoring works for SOCs right now. Okay, so now let's move on to what the US EPA has proposed. EPA is proposing regulating six PFOS compounds. Just like in Pennsylvania, they include PFOA and PFOS, but at an MCL much lower at four parts per trillion. Then these four additional compounds will have a hazard index of 1.0. When analyzing for these compounds, you will use EPA method 533 to achieve the very low reporting limits. If your results are below one third of the MCL and hazard index, you may be eligible for reduced monitoring. Okay, so let's compare both MCLs. Since PADEP's analytes are included in the US EPA's proposed list, you may choose to analyze all six at first but this would require a lower reporting limit and a different method. If you want to combine monitoring, you'll analyze all six analytes using EPA method 533. If you don't want to combine monitoring, you can simply analyze for PFOA and PFOS using method 537.1, and that's all that's required in PA right now but it's critical to know in advance so we analyze using the correct method. Our project managers can help guide you through this method selection process. Not to be forgotten, US EPA UCMR5 monitoring is also underway for many large and medium-sized systems, and that includes 29 PFAS compounds. Systems have different schedules, so you may be monitoring anytime between 2023 and 2025. And because of different QC and reporting requirements, analysis is done separately. However, you can do sampling at the same time if you wish to do so. Here are some helpful websites at suburbantestinglabs.com. We have a lot of guidance, including our ebook, which you can download. Search online for the EPA's PFAS in drinking water regulations, and their website is also helpful and includes guides like fact sheets you can reference. Finally, the PADEP also has a PFAS MCL rule webpage you can find by searching easily. This has helpful resources and documents, including public notification requirements. Suburban Testing Labs is your resource for PFAS monitoring. If you have any questions or want us to walk you through this over the telephone, here's our contact information. As always, this information is meant to be a guide and you should refer to your DEP representative in the actual regulations to ensure compliance. And that's an overview of the PFAS monitoring requirements for water suppliers and PA in under five minutes.